Walthamstow Wetlands is without a doubt one of the most historic carp fishing venues in the UK. A series of picturesque reservoirs in the heart of the capital, each home to some of the finest carp in the country. Since moving to London, I've been itching to get a campaign underway, and despite it taking longer than I would have liked, the time finally came for me to tackle one of the Stowe's famous reservoirs. August of 2021 was the first time I decided to properly fish the reservoirs. Yes, I'd visited Walthamstow for a number of years, but I'd always been sidetracked by the lovely Cotton Mill stream. But this time it was different, and I was adamant that that summer I was going to spend a good amount of time fishing on one of the reservoirs. Now, in the end, I decided to fish the two and three. It's a lake that's steeped in history. It's full of incredible carp and it's got a bit of everything. There's two lakes joined together, one that's shallow and silty, one that's deep with marginal snags. And from walking around it a few years previous, it just always appealed to me. So I decided to come down here and really dedicate sort of some hard two weeks of fishing on that lake. Mid-August, I came down here, did most of the sessions alone, but a few were friends, and I quickly found out that it wasn't gonna be as easy as I thought. I was chasing shows, casting singles at them, baiting spots, coming here across London on the transport just to have recce sessions and bait up and four, five, six sessions passed by with only a single small mirror under my belt. And to be honest, I started to get a little bit deflated. I was starting to think, how long is it gonna take for me to actually catch one of these Walthamstow carp? Oh my God. You actually can't write my luck. I've just got one and lost it. I had about two sessions left, two more day sessions, and I decided to come down here one late evening just to see if there was any fish showing ready for the next morning. And I remember coming down and putting a lot of bait out in a really shallow part of the lake, right at the end of the three. And that next day come round, I was up, I arrived at the lake straight on the gate, and I was absolutely shattered. And I got the rods out and decided, no matter what, I was gonna stay in that swim all day and just take the chance. And that session, it's safe to say, turned out to be a special one. And finally, after all that hard work, I hooked into one of Walthamstow's really special carp. I'm in. Oh my God. Finally. Oh, the baiting paid off. I was so desperate to get this fish in. I remember as if it was yesterday, saying, please, 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 please don't come off. And I was on my own, so I couldn't really film it. I had the GoPro on my head. I remember just taking it really gentle. I had the rod tip low. You could see it just bent over double. It was obviously a big fish. And the first sighting I got, it was relatively far out, sort of 20 yards out, and it just rolled across the top. And I remember saying, oh my God, it's a massive common. Come on. Please do not come off, please. Oh my God, it's a big common. It's a big common. Oh, my knees are shaking. Come on, we get in the net. First fish. Please, please get in that net. Please get in that net. Please. Yes! Get in! Get in! It's a big common. Oh! To go from seven, eight days of nothing but losing fish, chasing around, thinking, am I ever going to catch one of these proper carp from Walthamstow, to then having one of the biggest fish on the whole complex in the bottom of your net. I was literally just standing there probably for a minute or two, just like, just in shock, like absolutely over the moon. You never expect that to happen. Never expect to catch that fish, never mind for it to be the first proper one from the lake. Straight away, I started calling my friends, some of them to ask if they could help me with the photos and others just to tell them how excited I was and what I've caught. And yeah, it was just a really memorable moment and certainly one that I won't be forgetting anytime soon. <laughs> Honestly, you couldn't write this. 
I've been fishing here now, I've done about eight day sessions. Me and Jack made a joke saying the first one we catch after all this hard work will probably be the big one. And I can't believe I'm saying this. This is one of the biggest fish on the Walthamstow complex and it's the big one in this lake, 47 pound. I've not got an exact reading yet, but it was over 50 in the sling, so it's over 47. And that is why we put in all them hard days graft, days only fishing, and that is my UK PB. Absolutely blown away. I can hardly leave and hold it. It's made my year. Let's get you back, old girl. What a creature. Off you go. What a carp. What a carp. Well, it's been almost a year now since catching that common and I did return the following day and managed another really cool one, a nice 20 pound mirror. And unfortunately, as quick as the fun started, it was over. I had other places to be, other places to fish, but I promised myself I would return. And I'm here now, it's June. And you might say, why return? Why bother fishing it again? You got lucky, you caught the big one. However, although that one's the biggest fish in the lake, there's some ridiculous mirror carp in here, up to 40 pound. And I think, to be honest, as a general for the stow, there's not that many of these old relics left in the country at all. Some of the fish in this lake are over 40 years old. And yeah, there just isn't this type of venue, especially not in London, that holds as many special carp as this one does. So I'm back, it's the middle of June. This lake has a closed season, so it's not been fished for the last couple of months, which for me makes it the perfect time to fish it. The carp have spawned, they're nice and hungry and I'm hoping over the next couple of sessions I'm lucky enough to catch another one of Walthamstow's really special carp. Clarity is not quite as good as it's been for the last couple of days, to be honest. There's fizzing coming up on the spot. Yeah, I need to get a rod in. And again, yeah, there's fish there. There's fish on the bait. Oh. I haven't seen anything show, but that is definitely caught. Well, at least we're not running around like madmen for once. First swim. That wind's blowing right in here, isn't it? Fucking good. I've been baiting, I've come down here twice in the last week or so, and I've seen so many fish right in the snag. No man's land, you can't fish it. But I've been introducing the bait, trying to get them eating it, I'm trying to draw them out of the snag. And there's a nice little spot. You can't see it now, the water clarity's gone a bit greener. But last week you could see it and it was glowing. There's a bit of fizzing going on, so it's definitely a couple, so it's worth an hour or two. Big dirty Bosch, but I can't see. This is all overgrown here. Just a massive. <laughs> with plenty of activity in the area, I quickly got the rod set up. With fish already feeding on the bait, just a small amount of hemp seed, large seed mix, and broken scopex boilie, glazed over by a touch of salt, was all that was needed. Just enough for a bite. Oh! 
lose my mind, I'm going to get the other rod in. No! That rod was out two minutes. And as you saw, savage bite, locked up, didn't give an inch of line, cut me off. And I don't get cut off a lot. I think I need to have a little rethink. I'm going to drop this one a little bit shorter. It's the first fish I've lost like that, so. No! Not the one. Hopefully it's a small one. Despite me feeling like I've blown my chances, I got a fresh rig back out with the bushwhacker. And before I even had a chance to ship the pole back, I was in again. Yeah, he's in the snag. I've got to let him go. Right, I'm going in the lake, boys. 100% I'm going in the lake. Nothing I can do, lot. Yeah. Right. That's going down on a loose clutch. Can you bring me um, three bushwhacker sections or four bushwhacker sections? Because I can get under the line and trail it into where the fish is going. The fish will just be sitting in a snag down here somewhere. It's not looking good, man. So many snags here. What are you stuck on? I just don't want this. I don't want the fish to snap up. Right, I've got the line again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, I can feel the fish now. I can feel the fish. So I'm just trying to unravel it from under each snag, from the outside of the snag. Yeah, fish on, fish on. Yeah, it's worked. Yes, linear. Oh my God, that's an absolute banger. The net, Mike, I need the net, mate. Come on. Yes! Get in! Oh! <laughs> Jesus! I knew there was just no way I was going to land that if I didn't go in. What a fish, man. What a fish. God, 32, 12, and I think the sling's two pound eight, something like that. It's a 30. <laughs> that is mad, mate. And that is one of the fish that I've seen pictures of that I really wanted out of here. all the hemp and all the squid flake lot definitely on that bait that I put in last night this is probably one of the best carp I've ever caught look at the state of it wow this fish is probably up there with one of the best looking carp I've ever caught. And it's a 30 pounder, and it's from Walthamstow, days only. <laughs> I've actually am, um, for once, truly lost for words. I've been watching the fish in that snag for the last couple of weeks. They've been sitting right tucked up. I even managed to get the GoPro in there and it was impossible to actually get a rig anywhere close to them. So I decided leading up to these few days that I was going to come down, do a couple of recce sessions. I came down late last night and I put a good amount of bait in, loads of scope squid flake, hemp, 
just stuff to really keep them grubbing. And this one's passing it in the sling, so it clearly worked. And I don't think you're gonna get a better looking carp than that. And it's only day one. <sighs> Magical. Let's get this fish back. Probably give it another hour in this swim and then we'll head off and see what the rest of today will bring. <sighs> get in. I think going forward, it wouldn't be sensible of me to carry on fishing the way I am because I don't want to have to go in the water. I don't want to risk the fish getting tethered. So I'm going to fish even further, probably a couple of meters. It may result in a lack of bites because obviously there's a reason why I had two bites so quickly. They're obviously right under the snag, but it's not worth the risk, you know? So I'm going to put them back out again, still fish this zone, probably a meter or two further off the snags. rods did go back out but sure enough the fish had done the off so I put a few handfuls of bait on the snag and then headed off to check out the rest of the lake. So mate they're here. That's just come clean out the water on the inside of the fence. There it is bosh and again that was a different fish smaller one and I've bait literally last night I baited the wind's pushing in, there's a nice little slack bit on the back of the island. I've baited 15 and a half wraps. There's another one, and again. Come on! Right, you might question why I'm spawning. And no, it's not ideal, there's fish in the area. However, I'm probably going to set up in this room now for a couple of hours. And I don't want to do what everyone else does and throw in stick boilies out there. I put bait in last night, I put bits out there. So I want to replicate the feed that I was putting in. Three or four of these and then get the rig out. And there's fish literally cruising in and out of that fence. So get it all done as quickly as possible, ready for the evening. Master one. With a few spots out, I opted for a wafter over the bait and a bright pop-up just off the spot. Hopefully I hadn't caused too much disturbance and a few fish would get their heads down. Now for me, the reason why I always return to Walthamstow and something that I find really fascinating about this place as a complex is Despite it being in central London, in terms of you can see the big city not too far away in the distance, there's plenty of bird watchers, loads of wildlife in the area, and it makes you feel like you're out in the countryside. A lot of the fishing I do is right in the city, canals, rivers, park lakes, things like that, and it is nice to come here, not see many anglers with it being days only, and just sit back, relax, hear birds singing, and take in the environment. Tom. Or a bird, maybe. Well, the yellow pop ups ripped off. This fish is trying to do me around the corner, so I need to be concentrating. Come on. This was the one just out, slightly off the spot. Oh. What a day this is turning out to be. <laughs> I think it's only a smaller one. Yeah, it's a nice, nice dark little stocky by the looks of it. Jet black. Cheers, mate. It's only a little one. I did think it was small the way it was running round like a madman. Get in the net. Get in the net. Go on. Yes. Well, two swims. Two fish. Today, couldn't be going any better. Well, it's not 
it's not another original, but it is the future of the stow, and it's certainly taken on some lovely colouring if he wants to behave while I get him up. Come on. Come on. He's angry. Look at that for a carp. Got a little, little tinge of blue. Really unique colouring. No doubt it'll be one of the sought after ones in about 10 years time. The future of the stow. Probably stopped in here, I think about maybe five, six years ago. Lovely little carp. You can't pick which one takes the hook bait. The rod's gone back out, topped it up with a little bit of bait. And we'll see what the evening brings. Probably gonna give it an hour or two in here. If I don't see any more, probably head back into that corner where I caught the one from this morning. But yeah, another carp. <sighs> Lovely times, let's get her back. A few hours passed and I didn't see any more activity at this end of the lake. So I packed up the gear and made my way back to the corner swim where I'd caught from in the morning. The whole lake looked dead. I didn't see a single show. And despite getting my rods back out on the baited snag, the evening came to a close and it was time to top the swim up with some bait and head off. right over the spot. It's the first bit of activity I've seen. Just a big patch of fizzing. I mean, they've, they've definitely been on the bait. Nice fresh rigs on there. I'm a little bit OCD with my hooks, so nice sharp one on. Same again, nice and simple. Trim down snowman, nice balanced rig. Keeping it simple, fishing how I always do, but just adapting based on the situation and what the way I'm feeding. Just letting that wind drift the bushwhacker in on its own. Not seen any show yet, but we didn't see any show yesterday morning. Just a few little pinprick fizzings coming up just on our side of the snag, which indicates feeding fish or at least something passing over the spot and disturbing the, the bottom. Yeah, lovely. Cheers, bro. Nice Peace one, bro. See you in a bit. Alright, so I don't know if that's given me much more of an idea of what I want to do. He said he's seen a couple of shows, but they're right in the open water, so they're not close to the island in the swim I caught the small one from yesterday. Um, that's my friend Dave, who's fishing at the other end, which is good. It's good when you've got mates here, because you can fish either end of both lakes and obviously keep in touch and help each other out a little bit. Not a lot's going on down this end, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to reel in soon and at least give it an hour or two, probably in the channel swim, dividing both lakes. That way I can keep looking on both lakes and make a plan for this evening. But yeah, check this tree one more time in the snags, see what it's looking like and make a plan. Last week it was, it was tap clear and you could see just groups of them circling around this snag. Big ones as well. I managed to get the GoPro on a pole and stick it under. And you could, they were literally skimming the camera. But you can't get a rig anywhere near this bit. Where I'm fishing, it's just, oh, that's the big, that's the big mirror. It's just flanked. Oh. The big linear as it's there, it's right underneath me. The big linear is just flanked literally on a twig on the bottom. Oh. Funnily enough, I've got a cool story about that fish. I was in here last week, 
literally just doing a recce. I had rods with me though. I was potentially going to do a few hours fishing and I was feeding it in here, watching it. And I threw some bait on its head by accident. I thought it had left the swim and I threw some bait and it was coming in and it saw the bait and it spooked. Someone caught it 45 minutes later at the opposite end of the lake. I did the photographs for him, 37 pound, absolute banger. And an hour later, it was back in here again. So that fish definitely lives in this snag without doubt. And there's a lot, there's, there's, there's a lot of fish in here. So that has now changed my view slightly. I think my best bet is to just sit it out for today and hope that these fish, ideally that big one, finds the bait just off the back of the spot there. Oh my God, mate. You're just doing some... Oh my God. Mate, one just showed here while you were taking pictures over there, right on this bush here. Oh my God. And it's gone in literally five minutes. Could you hear me shouting you? Oh mate, it's... I can't believe I've managed to get it out, mate. It was all in here. Isn't it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe it, it's been so quiet for a few hours. And, oh. and one literally knotted out right here. Nothing on the area over there where I caught from yesterday. Oh. I was falling asleep to be honest. So tired, it's been a long, hot day. Oh, come on. Looks like a nice mirror. Yes. Lovely one. Come on. Get in that net. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. God, I'm sweating. Oh, right at the death, about an hour before the gate shuts. Get in there. Waltham <laughs> Stowe has blessed us with another Really cool carp. The boys were off getting some photos around the lake and I was actually packing up, literally I had my tackle box folded away. This one poked its head out. I literally lowered the rig right in the edge and it was probably two, three minutes out there and it ripped off. I couldn't quite believe it. I thought it was a coot to be honest. I've had a bit of trouble with them today. And look at that. That's certainly no coot. Another really cool Walthamstow mirror. This one is going to be the last fish of today. Got about 15 minutes before the gate closes, so quickly slip it back, pack the gear up, and then while I'm doing that, I'm going to have a little think for tomorrow's plan. Probably going to bait this swim, potentially put a little bit of bait in next door as well, just to give myself some options. Thank you very much. Look at that on the top of the shelf floor. See that? That's not stocky, that's a big mirror. That's a decent mirror. See that? All action stations. Got here this morning. The weather's completely different. Overcast, no wind. Checked out the corner that I've been fishing the last few days and not a single sign of a carp. No fizzing, went in the snag. It was gin clear, there was nothing there. Which in a way I was kind of happy about because I sat there all day yesterday I didn't catch a single fish off that spot. Gone round the rest of the lake, seen no shows. And I've got to the far end of the three, which is really shallow, really silty end of the lake. And an area that I fished quite a bit last year. And in the very last swim, there's a really deep spot as the water flows through a pipe and it runs up a shallow bar. I can see fish right now. 
it runs up really shallow bar. I'm talking a foot and a half shallow. And as I got it, it was pumping out really murky water. And I just saw a couple of dorsals sort of poking out the water as the fish were coming over the bar. And the boys were just bringing the, the car around. And I kept looking and I kept seeing fish, smaller carp to be fair. And eventually I saw a really nice mirror that stopped me in my tracks. So I'm just getting a nice rig, nice fresh one tied up. And I'm going to lower it in the deep water. that five minutes before it goes. There's loads out there. Get as far as I can. I'm in. Oh, it's a good one, it's a good one. It's a good fish. Original. Oh, yes. Oh, mate, it's going. Oh. Yes. Oh, mate. There was quite a lot of small ones down there. I've seen two decent mirrors. And it looks like I'm attached to one. Got to be careful. Really shallow here. Don't want it to rub against the bottom at all. Oh, mate, no, don't go on the wall. Don't go on the wall. Oh, it's horrible. That was just right here as the shelf comes up. Ah, oh, lovely cart, mate. Really old original leather. Lovely fish. That is the one I saw. Definitely. I saw its dorsal come across the bar and I'm 99% sure it was this fish. Just trying to do me in the pipe. No, don't go in the pipe. Don't do me in the pipe. Oh. Here he comes. Get in that net, you ancient carp. Oh, he's giving it a good go. Yes! Get in! Oh! I can't believe it. That is an old fish, mate. His eyes are like goldfish. The rod that I dropped in frantically, that I bushwhacked out there, it was on the floor. And even managed to get an alarm out. And I saw a big eruption on the top, looked at my line, saw it kiting. I cannot believe that. I wasn't even sure if I'd turned the pole in time for, for it in that other rod. That bushwhacker is an absolute godsend. I was just saying as well, to tone. I was lucky to catch that one because they've turned the, the water flow on now. This is pumping through. I wouldn't even be able to hold bottom where I just caught that mirror from. So it's all about timing. And it seems to have uh, gone exactly in my favour today. It's feeling a bit better now, actually saying that it's not an original, it may well be. It's a little stocky. Nah. Can't have them every time, can you? Pretty one though. Lovely little scaly one. Good sign though for later on, that is. It's gonna be hard to net it because that flow is pushing the bottom of the net away from me. Bosh. There was two in the net. <laughs> oh, what a morning. Oh, I've got two rods not even in the water now. I suppose I better get some more rigs tied up.
Well, I know it's a little bit of a cliche to talk about the future of the reservoirs, but this carp, I think it deserves it. Look at the state of that. That has got to be the best stocky I've ever caught. Massive plates. Looks like it's got a little bit of koi in it. A little bit of a yellowy orange underbelly. Just jet black. What a pristine fish. To be honest, when it first come up, didn't quite realise how nice it was. Just as I lifted it up then in the net to have another look at it, blown away. Let's get her back and show you the proper old one. Well, talk about stark contrast. That one that I've just shown you was a beautiful little double figure stocky. And this one is a god awful, <laughs> really old Walthamstow mirror. Safe to say, it's not the best looking fish you've ever seen. Weird looking fish, really sort of thin across the back end, really top heavy, and a lot heavier than I thought it was. Not far off 30 pound, I think it was 29 in ounces and an absolute bruiser of a carp. Way older than me, if not twice as old as me. And it was the only good fish that I'd seen on that spot, so what a result. It's still really early on in the day, so you never know. There might be more of these on the cards. However, if this is the last carp I catch, what a couple of days it's been. Oh get this old girl back. I sat it out for a couple more hours, but the action dried up. So I decided to call it a day and end on a high. What a great few days it was, and I'll certainly be back in the future.